You're wasting your strength. Uh, you said the goal was to knock over the opponent. Yes, but the bow staff does not require such physical force. The bow staff is about channeling your strength into defense and utilizing your opponent's moves against them. <laughs> like that. Ow! Uh, someone's certainly recovering quickly. One of the many gifts provided to us by Mother Nature. I don't follow. Before my capture, I spent a little time living off the abundant greenery the forest offered as I hid. I was also injured and in need of medical attention. All the supplies had been lost to the ambush, so I had to use what wits I still had to devise my own treatment. What did you do? I remembered an old herbal remedy my babushka used for all ailments when I was young. I scarred the forest to find as many ingredients as close to the original recipe as possible and immediately got to work in blending it into something useful. Some twigs and herbs are able to do that much? I would have succumbed to my injuries otherwise. Uh, well, I think I might need some of them after the ass-kicking you just gave me. <laughs> Do not be so sensitive. That was just the warm-up exercise. That was a warm-up? You clobbered me. I did nothing of the sort. I hardly moved, in fact. Tell that to my bruises. I suppose you'll just have to get better then. Are you going to let a few bruises stop you from becoming someone strong enough to face Chennai Wei? I didn't say I was letting anything stop me. I just needed a moment to catch my breath. <laughs> Good. Now try again. And this time, don't waste your energy by trying to attack. Study your opponent. Look for an opening. Utilize it. Got it? Got it. Yeah. CBW Productions presents Green Arrow, Year One. Produced by CBW. Written by Wyatt Bowden. Edited by Joseph E. W. Dinner now. Thea Queen. Oh no. You have failed this city. No, not you. Why am I here? I've done nothing wrong. Don't lie to me. 
I know about your involvement in the Viper operation. I know about Ouroboros. Thea? What's he talking about? Have it your way. What? What are you doing? Last chance to tell the truth. I... I... I don't know what you want me to say! Hmm. <sighs> Fine. Now we do this the hard way. I ain't afraid of you, man. If you're gonna do something, then go ahead and- What the hell do you think you're doing? Stop! Then tell the truth. Admit your involvement. Stop hitting him! You can make this stop. Just tell me what I need to know. Okay, yes, yes, I'm involved. But I only supply the equipment and the testing areas. Thea. But that's not all you do. You've also helped provide the test subjects for this poison that's been flooding our streets. Haven't you? It's true. I'm sorry, John. I'm so sorry. How deeply are you involved in this? Deep enough that I don't sleep most nights because of what I've done, and how many people it's hurt. If that's the case, that means you know who's in charge. I want their name! I... I don't know. I, I've never met them. We've only ever communicated via email. Stop <gasps> lying to me! Please, just stop! Tell me <laughs> the truth! I can't! You don't know what he'll do! If I were you, I would be more worried about what I'll do if you don't. Stop! Please, I'm begging you! No! It's Merlin! It's... it's Malcolm Merlin! He's the one who founded Ouroboros! What? Why would Merlin want to destroy the city? <laughs> He's doing this because of how he lost his wife. It didn't originally start out like this, though. <laughs> After my brother went missing, he asked me if I wanted in on a project that could change the city and, and make it better. I didn't know he meant by committing genocide. Genocide? This new strain that he's been cooking up, this dragon viper, it literally drives people insane, John. He wants the whole city infected with it. Why didn't you leave after you found out his intentions? I tried. But... That's when he told me... That he was the one who killed my parents. He what? My father... He helped him start this whole operation years ago, but I guess when he saw Malcolm was going too far, he tried to leave. And then Malcolm got rid of both of them. What hope did I in standing up to someone like that? I don't believe this. He showed me the proof, but that doesn't mean I just gave up trying to get away from him. I told him again that I wanted out. Then he threatened to kill my brother if I didn't see this through with him. I didn't have a choice. Yes, you did. You 
chose wrong. <laughs> what does Merlin still need to complete his plan? He's... he's waiting for a device to arrive that will disperse the Dragon Viper around the city. Malcolm... Malcolm's the only one who knows where these shipments arrive to. He also needs a compound that will stabilize the drug. Do you know where it is? Cord Industries has it. When is Ouroboros supposed to be completed? May 15th. The anniversary of his wife's death. That's why you wanted to be out of town in May. John, I... Do you know how many people I have shot with this bow? I, I don't! Too many! Every single one of them guilty of committing horrible crimes against the people of this city. Should I put an arrow in you for what you've done? Would you deserve it? <laughs> yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot you. Instead, I'm going to offer you the chance to make this right. How? How? How could I possibly even begin to make things right after everything I've done? You're going to keep me updated on what he's up to from this point on. Be warned. If you betray me, if he ever finds out any of what has transpired here tonight, I will be back to put an arrow in you. I'll do it. I don't... I don't want our city to die. You're free to go. Here, lean on me. I don't need any kind of help from you. I think you've done enough. <sighs> Why did it have to be him? How are you feeling, John? Like you hit me. A lot. Well, he did say you probably wouldn't like the plan. Hold still. Yeah, but he could have at least held some of those punches. Ugh. I said hold still. A little rubbing alcohol isn't going to kill you. I'm sorry, John. I did hold them as much as I could, but everything had to feel as real as possible to convince Thea you were in danger. Well, it certainly felt real to me. There you go, you big grown baby. Let me go find you some bandages. When I asked how you were doing, I was asking more about how you're coping with everything regarding Thea. I'm doing the best I can. I know I already knew about her involvement, but actually hearing her say it was... It was heartbreaking. I know. I feel the same way. How are you doing with what we just found out about Merlin? It hurts, honestly. I mean... He's been a part of my life since before I was born. Learning that he's not only behind this, but that he... <clears throat> it doesn't matter. I can't afford to think about that right now. We've just got to soldier on and worry about everything else later, right? I guess. Here you go. You boys planning things without me? Wouldn't dream of it. Good. 
Then let's get straight to business. What are we doing about Merlin? I think the first thing we should work on is finding out where he's going to keep that dispersal device. Agreed. The sooner we find that location, the easier it will be to stop him when it gets here. Right. Like any of this has been easy for us thus far. Maybe not. But, for the first time, we have the upper hand. We just need to think of a way to get to it that won't alert him to what we're doing. So, our best bet would probably be to find a way to distract him without him realizing what we're doing. You have something in mind? I do. You'll actually like this one, Dig. I'll like anything, as long as I don't have to get knocked around again. I'm in position. Me too. You have eyes on him? Yep. He's waiting for his order now. You sure this is gonna work? According to Thea, he comes here pretty regularly on the way back to the office. We just need to get the opportunity to engage so you can transfer the tracker program from my phone to his. Kind of like when I tracked you to Queen Consolidated a few months back? It's a lot like that, actually. We'll also try to clone his phone like I did to Captain McKenna last week. You did what? Man, I miss all the fun stuff. Ha, <laughs> fun stuff. Yeah, sure. Next time we're tracking a psychotic child killer, I'll let you have at it. So how exactly do you plan to engage? It can't be as simple as just randomly bumping into him. I'll improvise. Oh, here it comes. Oh my gosh, sir, I am so sorry. I stand corrected. Young lady, you should really watch where you're going. Look at the mess you made. Here, let me help you. Tracker program and cloning is in progress. You're doing great, D. This is so embarrassing, I really should be more careful. But don't just shove it all together. Let me do it. Signal's getting stronger. Don't let him move just yet. No, really, sir. I insist. Are you kidding me with this? Sir, I really am so sorry about all of this. Just let go. Please. I've got it from here. You sure? Maybe I could... I said I've got it. Come on, D. You still got some time on this process. I'm so sorry, sir. Really, I genuinely did not mean to knock you over like that, and then I just kept making an idiot of myself by making it worse, and now you probably think I'm some sort of lunatic because I keep babbling and- It's alright. Accidents happen. I suppose you weren't the only one who should have been paying better attention to where they were going. Enjoy your day, ma'am. Now we're losing the signal! Time for plan B, then. <sighs> Mr. Merlin? Oliver? Signal's back. I didn't know I was going to run into you here. I would have run the other direction when I had the chance. <laughs> yes, well, I come here quite frequently. The service as well as the coffee is, quite frankly, the best in the city. That's good to know. I'm trying to branch out and try other places since so much has changed while I was gone. Oliver, I've got the signal. But you might need to improvise something else while this is still going on. So, I know I'm probably the last person you want to see, but I am actually glad I ran into you. You are? Yeah. I just feel really uneasy about how we left things the last time we saw each other. I also saw what happened a few minutes ago. Would you like to sit while you fix your papers? That's not a bad idea, I suppose. That's perfect. Try and stay there. I'll let you know when we're done. <laughs> Having a rough day, sir? No, no. This is just a mild inconvenience. Speaking of inconveniences, what do you want? I just thought I would try again with you. 
Why the hell would you do that after how our last conversation went? Because of the history between our families. I've known you my entire life, sir. You're practically the only family Thea and I have left now. Maybe so, but given our history together, I don't exactly see how we can move past what's happened. I don't either. But I'm trying, at least. If both of our families were still here, don't you think they would want for us to find another way to get along? I suppose you might be right. After all, we are both the only links the other has to those we've lost. Just keep him talking a little longer. It sure seems that way, sir. In that same respect, I suppose I should also apologize for how I treated you when you returned. I behaved poorly and said some very hurtful things. It's not like I didn't deserve it, sir. You really didn't. I was angry, upset, and, and needed someone to blame for my pain. So I lashed out at you. But in my grief, I never even stopped to consider how you felt living with Tommy's death. It never really gets easier, losing someone you love. No, it really doesn't. But sometimes... Sometimes I feel like I can still hear him. Like he's right here with me. <laughs> Oddly enough, I feel the same way about your father. My father? Oh yes, I think about Robert all the time. We may not have always seen eye to eye, but I always valued his opinion on things. No matter how naively he saw the world. There's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to look for the best in people. No, but it certainly wasn't the wisest frame of mind for someone of his status. Then again, he was always endearing himself to just about anyone with that charm he had. I miss your father every day. Your mother, too. There was no one else I'd rather have in my corner than them. Thank you, Mr. Merlin. That actually means a lot to me. Please, call me Malcolm. We've known each other for so long that formalities just feel... insincere. All right. Thank you, Malcolm. <laughs> Look at us, enjoying an intimate conversation pleasantly. I think both our lost loved ones will be proud to see us here like this. I think so too. Look, Oliver, I don't know if I will ever get over what you told me about Tommy's death, but I'd like to work through it. I don't really know if I'll ever get over it either, sir. And I guess we should try and work through it together. I think Tommy and your father would have loved that. I'd like that too. But why the sudden change of heart? Something is changing within this city, Oliver. If there's one thing I'm grateful for with my Tommy and Rebecca's deaths, it's that they aren't here to see how far the city they loved has fallen. I'd hate for anything to happen to you or your sister, simply because we are at odds. Meaning? Meaning we should look out for one another. Stand united, not apart. One thing I know too well is that we never really know how much time we have left. Kind of like your parents. My parents? To have been taken so suddenly like that, it really makes you think about where one's priorities in life should be. Wouldn't you agree? More than you might think. Oh dear me, look at the time. I would love to continue chatting, but I really do need to get back Not to the him. office. Not done yet. You need to keep him there. I understand. I'm really glad I ran into you today, Oliver. As I said, the city's changing. We need to make the most of what time we have left before that change takes us completely. What's that supposed to mean? Just a figure of speech, my boy. Nothing to get worked on. Crap! I just lost the signal. Oliver, what happened? Oliver!
Oliver, what was that back there? I'm sorry, John. We were so close to having the upper hand, and you choked when the moment counted. Dig! I didn't choke. Then what was it, Oliver? Because now we're back at square one, and this time, that's your fault. Dig! Ease up. Yeah, things didn't go the way we wanted. But we aren't exactly back at square one. And I'm sure Oliver has a reason for why he let Merlin go. Yeah, sure. My bad. Where are you going? I need some air. Well? Well what? What was your reason? Because I'm sure you could have come up with something to keep him there just a little longer. It doesn't matter. Did we get anything from Merlin's phone before the signal got interrupted? Nothing for the tracker program, but we got a somewhat of a partial download. We started running the decryption program before you got back. <sighs> then we'll just have to make that work for now. Looks like some of it has already come through. Anything interesting? Just some emails and testing reports so far. It's sounding like the stabilizer Thea told us about is to help the mixture from deteriorating in the subjects immediately. What does that mean? Didn't you say you saw the full effects of this substance on the island? It probably means that he augmented it somehow. Maybe trying to mass-produce it on this kind of scale has probably weakened the original ingredients. What? What is it? Look at that last email that was sent. Sounds like Merlin's trying to get a shipment area prepared for the device. Yeah, but look at who it's been sent to. Who's Big Buffalo Bill 74? That's the mayor. Queen, some of us didn't have rich parents who golfed with the mayor. How would I have known that? Right, sorry. But still, if Merlin is emailing Bill Murphy about his shipment, then that means... That we don't necessarily need to track Merlin to its location. We just need to have a talk with the mayor. I'll call Dick. I can't believe this. I know. I mean, it's not a surprise given how dirty Murphy already is, but... No, I can't believe you still haven't told your team the real reason you let my dad get away from you. It doesn't matter. It does matter when it's clearly eating you alive inside. It's not something that I have time to deal with right now. Not when there's more important issues in front of us. <laughs> sure. Just keep shoving it down like you do everything else. That's a healthy way to process your emotions. Any luck? None. It went to voicemail three times. I left him one and sent him a text, but- We'll have to go without him then. We don't need to let this sit. Not when we're still looking for a way to get a leg up on Ouroboros. You sure? It's not like Murphy's gone anywhere. No. But John is clearly wrapped up in something that's taking his focus from the mission. And you are not? I... I'm... <sighs> I'm fine. Suit up. Okay. I did it! Finally! Very good. Now do that consistently until you only make perfect shots and you will finally have mastered the bow. I think I've been doing pretty well thus far, all things considered. You have been lucky, yes. But to fight our enemy head on will take more than luck. You will need to hone every skill until it is sharp enough to take on every opponent. I feel like I've improved quite a bit, at least. Yes, you have shown great improvement over these past few months. But, despite your skill, you are still aiming your bow with your eyes, instead of your heart. 
I'm what? Isn't that how you shoot a bow? Nothing you do with excellence is ever done so literally. Yes, you are aiming the bow, but it is becoming an extension of your strength. Or are you merely just firing it, like one would fire a gun? Uh... Let me show you what I mean. First, get another arrow ready to shoot. Good. Now find your center. Now take aim. Make your bow wielding arm firmer. A loose grip will only cause your aim to falter as you release it. Now focus on your target. How much focus do I need? Enough that you only see them. There should be nothing else in this moment, other than you and your target. Do not even think about aiming the bow. You are the weapon. The bow is only an instrument. I really don't think that- Shh! Concentrate. Find your focus and take deep breaths. Then release. I did it! How did I do that? You did it because you found the will to become the weapon and to seek your target. Also, because you have a great teacher. <laughs> that I do. Now, come over and sit. The food should be ready by now. And you've gotten in enough practice for today. Oh, man. That smells so good. Dig in. I'm sure it tastes even better. Mmm. That hits the spot. <laughs> Do not talk with your mouth full. I am glad you like it. I'll be sure to add cooking to our list of things I can teach you. I'd really like that. I don't think I've ever used anything to actually cook something a day in my life before I came here. Cooking is a good skill for a multitude of reasons. I used to cook for my brother and I after our parents passed. Rest assured, I will teach you everything I know, so that you can dazzle your sestra with your newfound culinary abilities when you return home, along with whoever you may choose to marry. <coughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't really know if I'm the marrying kind. I mean, sure, I definitely wasn't before, but marriage requires a lot of sacrifice. I don't know if I'm selfless enough to give that level of care to someone. You would be surprised at what you are willing to do for someone you care for. Besides, time is young and so are you. You have plenty of time to decide. How come you don't talk about your brother that often? Unfortunately, Anatoly and I no longer speak. How long has that been? Since he decided having a sestra who worked for Interpol was bad for his Pratva image. That was a little over a decade ago. I can't even imagine. Thea and I have always been close. Even when I was a bratty kid that wanted nothing to do with her, she would always come chasing after me and my friend Tommy wherever we went. <laughs> it's how she got the nickname Speedy. I can't even imagine how things have been for her since I've been gone. If she's anything like her brother, she's adapted and become stronger for it. Hey, Tayana? Da? Can I ask you something that's been on my mind for a little while now? Of course. You can ask me anything you like. Why do you hate Chen Na Wei as much as you do? I know she's a criminal and she tortured and imprisoned you. But the animosity I saw between you two the night we escaped seemed almost... personal. 
You, my friend, are a lot more observant than you realize. We don't have to talk about it if you... No, no, it's alright. You have a right to know more about the enemy we face. When I was moved into the Special Operations Division of Interpol, I was given permission to create my own task force and choose my own team to catch some of the world's most dangerous criminals. I then handpicked every last member, all but one, a field analyst named Mary Liu, who practically begged to be on my task force. She said she had heard of my reputation as I rose through the ranks and really wanted an opportunity to work together and prove herself. <sighs> and prove herself she did. For four years she had my back, and together we got many of Interpol's most wanted, except one. China White. China White was mostly a myth in our organization, a mysterious white-haired woman who did the triad's dirtiest tasks and did so with the efficiency of a trained assassin. Every time we received a lead, it always became a dead end. Many believed she did not even truly exist, that she was just a made-up figure within the circles for organized crime to hide the true masterminds within the triad. Like a scapegoat. Da. Do you remember how I told you? We finally found proof of her existence. You said it was her passport. That it was flagged for having some questionable cargo being transported, and that eventually led you here. What I did not tell you was that Mary Liu was the one who found this lead. That she was the one who said there was mysterious activity happening somewhere in the North China Sea, and that we should pursue it before we lost her again. After working together for so long, I trusted Mary's instincts. We followed China away to this island, and when we arrived, I found out that the woman whose face I saw on that passport was not her at all, but that China Wei had been standing next to me the entire time. She then proceeded to have our entire team slaughtered right before my eyes. My partner and friend to betray me without a second's hesitation. How is something like that even possible? The triad is nothing if not resourceful. No doubt they have a contact that is able to forge papers and identities. But why go through all the trouble? You know, I've been asking myself that question for over a year now. If I had to guess, I would say she did it to keep an eye on the authorities, give misdirection when needed, and to wipe out her competition as she began to consolidate power within the triad. But once she had what she needed, the only thing left standing in her way was me. But four years? How could someone lie to someone that cared about them for that long? Why even still go through with it after all that time? Because everything about Mary Lou was a lie. Every moment shared, and every word that was ever uttered, was nothing more than a fabrication. Do you really think it's that cut and dry? That it was all just a lie, and not a single moment you two shared was ever real? It does not matter what I think. The past is the past. The only thing that matters is that now she is the only obstacle standing between us, the prisoners, and freedom. We should get some rest. Tomorrow we begin rock climbing, so please eat as much as you like before you sleep. You'll need the added strength to keep going upwards. Easy there. You all right, sir? I'll be fine. My damn cart won't see another sunrise, but at least I will. 
That's good to hear. What happened? Bah, it's just old and useless. Damn thing just finally gave up. <laughs> kind of a funny metaphor when you think about it. I don't see what's funny about someone just trying to get by. Well, you would certainly be the only one, friend. You a soldier by chance. How'd you guess? <laughs> I can always spot a fellow grunt. What division? I did the recon division in Afghanistan and Kosnia. You? A fellow jarhead from the 1st Division. <laughs> well, isn't that a fun coincidence? I was in the recon battalion in Nam. I'm Joe. Joe Thomas. John Diggle. You have anywhere to go tonight, Joe? Uh, I did. But then the Merlin Clinic turned me away. The Merlin Clinic? I thought it was built specifically to help the less fortunate. It was. Let's just say that nothing's been the same since Rebecca Merlin died. Tragic thing will happen to her. What about her husband? He either doesn't know or doesn't care. Besides, City Hall took over conservatorship after she passed. Merlin doesn't have anything to do with how the place is run. Here, sir. Take this. It's all the cash I have on me. Uh, nah, nah, I couldn't possibly ask that of a fellow Marine. It's the least I can do for a fellow recon soldier. Please. Alright. If you insist. There's a relief center over on Harkavy Lane. They actually do accept everyone. The one that used to be run by those shysters, Lemire and Grell? I don't think so. Longbow Consortium has nothing to do with that shelter anymore. A friend of mine runs it most of the time. She and her staff are good people. Believe me when I say, you'll be safer there than on the streets. Okay. I'll trust you on this, soldier. You won't be disappointed, sir. Tell them you were referred by a friend of Dinah's. They'll take care of you. Hey, Marine. Semper Fi. Hoorah! John, I... It's just me. No reason to be on edge. Well, we both know that's not true. Where have you been? You've been avoiding me since... Since I found out about your involvement in a plan that would wipe out most of our city... Shh, not so loud. People might hear you. And what if they did, Thea? You gonna have them silenced for knowing something they shouldn't? What? No, of course not. What about me? Is your partner Merlin gonna have me silenced since I now know too much? No, John, I, I would never. Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell Malcolm about what happened with the hood. I meant what I said. I want to make things right. Sure. Now you want to. What's that supposed to mean? You made a deal with the devil. But only now that you've had the fear of God put into you, have you finally found religion. John, please, you don't understand. How did you even find me out here? Did you track my phone? Well, yes, I, I did, but what else was I supposed to do? You won't answer my calls, my, my texts. You also didn't show up for work today. You could have respected my privacy. I'm just wanting to talk about this with you, but you won't let me. What is there to talk about, Thea? I've known you for five years, and at no point did you ever mention that you were involved in a plan that was going to practically burn down the city. I... I just... I didn't know how to bring it up. I wanted to, especially when things started to turn bad, but... After Malcolm told me what he did to my parents, I just... I couldn't put you in that kind of danger. <laughs> I'm a soldier, Thea. I'm also your bodyguard. It's my job to keep you safe, not the other way around. I know, but... I, I care about you a lot, John. 
before Oliver came back, you were all I had. I didn't want to risk that I would lose you too. I care about you too, Thea. I wouldn't be so mad if I didn't. If you had just told me about this sooner, then maybe... Maybe I could have helped you get out before things escalated. But now we'll never know. What I do know is that you've made your bed. Now you have to lie in it. What are you saying? I, I'm, I'm saying that I don't want any part of this. You're on your own here. What? What was that? Marcus? Is that you? <sighs> I swear. If one of those goons broke something, it's coming out of their salary. Hello? Oh, God damn it. Mm -hmm. How the hell did this glass get here? Mm. Oh, I hope I don't have to get stitches or something. Mm. Mm. Still, though, I wonder how that got here. I probably just didn't remember leaving that there. Uh, better to think more on that in the morning. <clears throat> First, Neosporin and a Band-Aid, and then back to bed. <laughs> oh, Bill Murphy! <sighs> what in the blazes? <laughs> Are you insane? You nearly killed me! Key word there is... Nearly. Those are some thick pillows you got there. What do you want? We need to talk. Like hell we do. I have nothing to say to you. Uh-uh. Simon didn't say get up. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, m m meaning? Meaning I see you for what you are, Mr. Mayor. You're not a strong force of nature the way you think you are. You're just scum that managed to find its way off of someone else's boot and thought that meant you were the boot. You think you're some grand mastermind moving pieces around this city. But even now, you're just another snake working for Viper. The viper <laughs> The drug operation. Well, I'm afraid you must be mistaken. I, I don't know anything about- <laughs> You can save your breath trying to lie to me. I already know about your connection to Ouroboros and Malcolm Merlin. So now you're going to tell me everything you know. <clears throat> if you... If you know about Malcolm, then you already know that I... I can't tell you anything. Do you have any idea what he'd do to me if I did... Ah! <clears throat> Seems like those hands are still pretty sensitive from our last visit. <sighs> Malcolm killed his own partner that helped him start this whole damn thing simply because he just pleased him. Do you think that kind of man would, would hesitate for an instant to do the same to me if I talked to you? I think you have a lot of dirt on your name. Money laundering. Trafficking. Child abuse. Sure, you've worked pretty hard to make yourself look clean, 
But what do you think the people of this city would do to you if they saw you for what you really are? <sighs> what are you more afraid of? Mm. Merlin or the truth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you... Mm, do you think that I'm an idiot? <sighs> that I didn't have the foresight to bury any evidence against me deep beneath the earth after our last encounter? <laughs> hmm, no, oh, dig around the dirt all you like. But you'll never find anything against me now. <sighs> You better hope that's not true. Because if you left even one stone unturned out there, believe me, I'll find it. <laughs> hmm. Bluff all you want. It still won't make me talk. I'm going to give you to the count of five to reconsider. One, two. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wonderful weather we are having tonight. Wouldn't you agree, Vigilante? You. <laughs> Care to take in the night air with me? What do you say? Ready for round two? What was that? Unexpected. Let's call this to be continued. Hey! Now you wait just a minute! Uh. Someone's gotten faster than last time. Too bad it's still on to you any good. We'll see about that. doing here my job which includes eliminating you should you begin to pose more of a threat to our doors and its goals a shame I have enjoyed these little sparring sessions of all. Let's see how you do with a little two-on-one, you psycho creep. <laughs> uh, as much as I would love to pit my strength against the two of you, I think I'll have to decline for now. Giving up? Far from it. <laughs> but I've done what I set out to complete. The mayor has, more than likely, called in his security detail, and now your entryway has been sealed. However you got in, you certainly won't be doing the same way twice. You failed. Again. I still have you. Not quite. We'll just have to continue this another time, Vigilante. <gasps> Any sign of him? None. He's gone. Again. I got your message. What happened? Another dead end. What? 
How? The other archer showed up and stopped our interrogation. He didn't just stop us. He derailed the whole damn mission. Now Murphy's in the wind, and we're actually back at square one. Well, maybe the mission could have been salvaged if you had waited for me to come with. I tried to call you, Dig, but... But it was my call. And what makes it okay for you to cut me out of the loop? Oliver... It doesn't make it okay. But you don't have your head in the game right now. Excuse me? Guys, come on! Ever since we did the interrogation with Thea, you've been out of it. Sure, you're here in the bunker with us, but your mind is miles away, stuck somewhere personal. Hey, is this really the most productive use of our time? And what about you, man? What about me? You were supposed to lowjack Merlin so we could find the dispersal device, and you choked. You really gonna sit there and tell me that's not personal? That's different! How is it different? <laughs> D, what was that for? Do I finally have your attention? Good. You both are behaving childishly right now, and we do not have time for it! But- I'm not done talking, so zip it, queen! Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We have less than a month to find Merlin's device and stop him from infecting the entire city with Dragon Viper. So instead of fighting each other, why don't you both- Collectively, get your heads out of your asses so we can come up with a game plan to stop Merlin, Diaz, and the other archer. We can't. What was that, Oliver? Go on, buddy. Tell them what's been on your mind. Let them hear how crazy you sound. Maybe they'll actually talk some sense into you. We can't stop them. Not the way we've been going at it. Look, Oliver, I know we've had some setbacks, but- But we haven't just had setbacks, John. Every time we get one step closer to something good, another obstacle comes along to knock us back by five. The way we're trying to get ahead of this isn't working. Then what are you suggesting? Don't stop now, go on. They're your friends, Holly. You've gotta let them in. I'm suggesting that we may have to consider eliminating these obstacles entirely. And by eliminate... You mean kill. I didn't sign on for that. What did you sign on for then, John? We're fighting a war right now to save this city. As a soldier, I thought you would get that sometimes drastic measures may have to be taken. I signed on to help the people of this city. Not to take lives. And what if taking out Merlin and the Dark Archer is the only way left to save those lives? This wouldn't have anything to do with Merlin killing your parents, would it? That's an excellent question. Because you weren't advocating for murder until you found this out. I... I'm not... It isn't... It's not the only reason. Then please explain because he makes my skin crawl too. But I am really struggling to see why we should be considering murder when there's always another way to stop someone. I'm not gonna sit here and deny that it isn't a little bit personal. After my parents died, Thea and I were absolute wrecks. I was doing literally anything and anyone to push the pain away and Thea became a total recluse who hardly ever left her room. You know who helped us get through it? Tommy, and his father. That man sat across from me for years, knowing he was the reason for our sadness without so much as an inkling of remorse on his face. And I get that, but how does you shooting him dead with an arrow to get back at him nullify anything that he's done? What's that saying about an eye for an eye making the world blind? I'm not saying it nullifies what he's already done. But if he dies, then the Dragon Viper operation dies with him. Maybe it does. But maybe Diaz will just pick it up for him. You gonna kill Diaz too? Or the other archer? Whatever happened to doing whatever it takes to save the city? Why does that have to include cold blood and murder? We aren't killers, Oliver! Speak for yourself. 
What's that supposed to mean? It's not like I haven't killed before. You mean on the island? That was different. No, John, it really wasn't. When I was on that island, I had to do whatever it took to survive and see another day. When the traffickers came for me, I made sure that I would be the only one left standing to see tomorrow. Right now, this situation is starting to feel a lot like it did then. That we have no other choice but to get them before they get us. But that doesn't mean it's our only option. Then what else are we going to do, Dinah? Because while we're standing here debating morality, Merlin is getting closer to setting off his plan. What if we steal Merlin's stabilizer? You want to run that by us again? If we're worried about Merlin getting what he needs to set off the dispersal device, why don't we just take the stabilizer so he can't complete it? Is something wrong with me suggesting that? Mr. High Road suggesting we steal from Cord Industries. <laughs> nah, that's perfectly normal for you. It's not like I want to steal anything. But if we have to cross a line to stop this from happening, then I'd sooner steal something the opposition needs than kill someone. What do you think, Oliver? I think... <sighs> I think that could work. But we do need a game plan for getting in there. Cord industry security is going to be tight. And that's what we'll shift our focus to for now. But... But? If we fail to do this, if we can't find any other way to stop Merlin from killing the thousands of people that will be affected by this poison, I will not hesitate to put an arrow into him and anyone else who tries to stop us from saving this city. Are we all clear on that? Yeah, I think so. John? I don't like it. But I'll agree to it as long as it's only decided as a method of last resort. I can agree to that. All right! Now that that's settled, let's go get some takeout before we get to planning. All this arguing has made me hungry. You hungry, Dig? <laughs> I could eat. How about you, Queen? That sounds fine. But you guys go ahead. I just need a moment to work through some stuff before we keep going. Sure thing, man. Take all the time you need. Text me what you want from Noodle Hut. We'll be back soon. Something tells me that, true to that charming Oliver Queen stubbornness, you're already pretty decided on what you're going to do. So what if I am? Killing him isn't going to bring back your parents. Oliver. I know it won't. This isn't just about what he's done to my parents. Think about what Murphy and Thea said about him and the type of man he is. You really think that if we take the stabilizer, he won't just find another way to make this insane plan of his work? How many more people are going to die in that process that could have been saved if I had just taken him out right there at that cafe like I wanted? Did you actually want to? Or were you just looking for an excuse to give in to behavior that you know that you're better than indulging in? Why am I even debating this with myself? My mind is made up. If that were true, I wouldn't be here. <sighs> oh, glare and growl all you want. But I know what this is really about. You're still blaming yourself for all the bad things that have happened since you put on that hood. Things that I could have stopped if I had just- You're also still blaming yourself for stuff that happened years ago. The Queen's Gambit, my death, the island. Diana? Do you know why I still blame myself? Because back then, if I had just chosen to do the right thing, if I had just made a different decision, then maybe... Maybe the both of you would still be alive. And you really think killing my dad is going to just magically absolve you of all that? Maybe not. But I think it would show that I'm finally learning from my mistakes. Tommy. It's been almost a year, 
and I'm still repeating the same type of patterns that led to all that misery in the first place. Well, now I have an opportunity to do the right thing before it's too late. If I kill him now, then I am at least certain that this ends before he can hurt anyone else. Except he will still have made one final victim in the end. You. If you do this, then all you will be doing is creating more ghosts to haunt your already burdened mind. Adding more baggage to weigh you down as time goes on. I once told you that I didn't know if I could ever be selfless enough to sacrifice for someone else. I think that burdening myself a little more qualifies as an apt enough sacrifice to ensure the safety of others. No! You can lie to your friends, but you cannot lie to yourself. Killing Merlin may have positive outcome for the city, but do not pretend you would be doing it for anyone else but yourself. That is not the man I trained. I trained you to fight with honor and to protect the weak. And I have. I have done everything I can to honor my vow to you. But this is bigger than just defending a few people at a time from a minor threat or striking fear into the hearts of the guilty. This is about making a decision that would save thousands of lives in an instant. How can something so simple be the wrong decision? That is a question you will have to work out for yourself, Mlachi brat. I agree, this man must face justice for what is done, but do not pursue this at the cost of your soul. You know in your heart that I never wanted you to suffer that kind of torment. Maybe it's not as simple as I'm making it sound. Maybe I am being a little selfish with my intentions. But if I had been willing to kill China White when I had the chance, then I wouldn't have had to watch you die. And that is a mistake I will never make again. He killed my parents. He's killed countless others in pursuit of his goals. Whether it's morally right or wrong, I do know killing him is the best thing I can do to save this city. Oh. Now you sound like that which you despise, rather than my student. What do I sound like? You sound more like that Yavor plaguing your mind. Marlin. Green Arrow Year One stars Jake Johnston as Oliver Queen, Gina Stockwell as Dinah Lance, Cliff Jones as John Dickel, Summer Rose as Thea Queen, J.D. Shouse as Malcolm Merlin, the Dark Archer, and Joe Thomas. With Wyatt Bowden as Tommy Merlin and Bill Murphy, and Kat Leroy as Tayana Kenyaziv. Story written and directed by Wyatt Bowden. Music scored by Wolf Number Nine. Featuring additional music brought to you by The Knighthood Project. Audio engineered by Billy Mazel. Series art by Evan Collin. Edited by Joseph E.W. Series produced by CBW Productions. No one is ever born evil. They are simply made to be by the experiences that shape them. At the behest of a task given to him by the mayor, 
Malcolm Merlin begins to take a trip down memory lane as he is finally put into a confrontation with the man who killed his wife. And all is finally revealed behind the events that set him down this path. Next time on Green Arrow Year One. The Road to Hell. It is said that when you set out on a path of vengeance, you should dig two graves. One for the person you kill. And the other for the man you used to be.